we'll just dive quickly into our experience with uh, build uh, with Bitbake build and uh, analyzing it on the process level. So uh, my name is Amir Kirsch. I'm from Incredibuild. I work as the developer advocate at Incredibuild. I'm also a lecturer at the Academic College of Tel Aviv Yafo and Tel Aviv University, a member of the Israeli ISO C++ national body and co-organizer of the core CPP conference and meetup group. Uh, I would start shortly with what we do at Incredible because in a way we need that in order to understand what we were striving, what we were aiming for in the farther slides. Um, we do um, the uh, distribution to the grid, to on-prem machines or to the cloud of um, your CI process for accelerating your, develop your development. So um, mainly we focus on C++, on uh, C and C++ builds, but uh, it includes also testing and any other task that can be parallelized can go to other machines in order to utilize um, unutilized machines on your own uh, network or using the cloud. Now you can understand that this is something that may be relevant also for Yocto and this was what uh, drived us uh, into the process of, well, we want to analyze uh, what we can do with Yocto. Can uh, we add some value? Can we shorten the build time by distribution to additional machines? And the idea in this talk is not to talk about Incredible as the product, but about the process, uh, the, the points that I would go through would be relevant for any distribution system and we are not the only one out there, even though I think that we did quite a nice job here. So let's start. Uh, I stole this slide from yesterday's talk, uh, the introduction talk. So um, Bitbake is complicated. It's one of the most complicated build systems that we see out there. I, I mean, we work with many build systems. We like them all alike. Um, but I think that we have much respect for Bitbake. Uh, when, when I look at what we have there with handling recipes and layers and different architectures, like a metaverse of architectures, um, my associate, I, I have the associative thinking of a movie that I just uh, uh, watched recently, uh, everything everywhere all at once. I don't know if you saw this one, it's out there. Uh, it came out quite recently. You should go see it. If you're in Yocto, you would see the, the you know, what I see here, the relation between Yocto and, and this metaverse movie. The idea of all different architectures being built and what we strive at Incredibuild to be there at once, all at once. So um, this, this was the movie and now we come to the reality. So um, before we start on, on talking about um, distribution, there are first steps for a more efficient build that many of the items here were discussed already, so I would do it quite quick. Um, the first one is we do not want to fail and come tomorrow and see that uh, the build failed. Uh, but this advice is good only if we actually fail. I mean, if, if you come tomorrow and you see that the build is still running, uh, and nothing failed. And so, so it doesn't expedite anything. It just continues, which is good. It's important, but it is not expediting anything. Still, you probably want not to stop your build on any failure, but to use minus K. Estate. Uh, I would uh, discuss tomorrow in another talk, uh, estate and Ccache and some ideas about using them both. Uh, so using cash is, of course, something important, but what we see when we work with customers is that, and I guess you see the same, is that even if you work with uh, estate, um, usually some build has to be done, even if you are after a full build. You touch something, you get a new build, you wait. Uh, and in many cases, you touch something and you wait for many things. Again, it depends on what actually happened. I would talk about uh, the caching tomorrow. Parallel build. 
Well, parallel build is the topic of this uh, session, and you start with the proper flags inside um, the configuration file. And these are the flags, these are the links to the flags. Uh, and the nice thing here is that even if you do not touch the flags, the default is based on the number of cores on your build system. But it is important to note that the parallelism here is on your own machine, on a single machine, which is nice, which is good. But if we can use additional machines, this would be, of course, something good. And we want to check that. Uh, there is a difference between parallel make and parallel make uh, in inst, which uh, adds to the parallelism also additional um, tasks, not only the compilation. By the way, you can set different parallelism uh, values based on the recipe, uh, recipe level. So uh, you can check that there is a link to Stack Overflow on that point. Additional advices uh, from Yocto Manual on, on speeding up the build uh, can be found uh, at this link. Um, and of course, throwing in additional cores, which is uh, either additional cores um, on the same machine, I mean, getting a bigger machine, uh, better hardware, or uh, distributing to additional machines, either on-prem or uh, on the cloud, both can be an option. And the question is, would it help? Would it shorten my build time? Uh, and, and the question would it help because maybe the bottleneck is not on number of CPUs. Maybe I'm waiting for other things. So uh, what consumes, what are the resources consumed by a build? So we have the CPU. Um, it might be that we have tasks uh, that exceeds the number, the number of, uh, of tasks that are ready uh, to go exceed the number of uh, cores and we wait for that. It might be that uh, there is a task that um, cannot be uh, distributed to cores on the single machine that can run only on a single core. And this task is quite long, like for example, linking um, and memory is an issue. Maybe um, I'm swapping to a virtual memory or um, I'm uh, having not enough memory, um, slow IO. And at uh, the end, networking. So all these are part of the um, build and, and the resources that are consumed by the build. And it, it might be that our bottleneck is networking, for example. And if networking is the bottleneck, then distributing to additional machines would not necessarily help us because it would just you know, increase the amount of networking uh, required in order to, at the end, have the build, the images ready on the initiating machine. So we want to analyze this question. And in order to analyze this question, we start with a simple analysis of what we have on the single machine. So we take a look at the networking and we take a look at the CPU. And we see that indeed, um, during the build, the CPU comes to 100% CPU utilization on the machine. But that's not enough. I mean, I mean, we feel that we need an additional information in order to understand, okay, um, do we have something to parallelize also when we are not on 100% CPU? Uh, and, and we need to understand better the process level. Now, now the, the idea on our side, I mean, when we got into this process, we want to understand whether there is a potential to uh, expedite the build. And we want to understand where to seek for that. I mean, any additional effort that we need to invest. And I would talk about the challenges. So um, questions that arise are which tools are common across many uh, recipes, which tools take up most of the time, and what are the bottlenecks? So uh, when we run the entire build tree, we want to go into the process. Uh, it might be that you the, that uh, you have seen this uh, dashboard. This is incredible dashboard, but we use it here not in order to parallelize the build to additional machines. We started by saying, okay, let's use Incredibuild, which allows us to have better view into what happens for each process on its own core on a single machine. So we can analyze each core, what happens on the core, does it have uh, any 
uh, task running. Um, and then we can better understand whether there is room for sending some of the tasks to additional machines. And again, what you see here is the view from Incredible. You can see similar views with other dashboards that give you the information of what do I have per each core. Uh, when we analyze the CPU, we see that uh, we have um, the 100% CPU usage um, in a very um, long um, period in, in many places during the build. So the samples uh, show that, yeah, there is a room here for better utilization if we have additional cores, either uh, better hardware or additional machines. Um, and we log the information so we can then query it uh, by simple uh, queries, by simple SQL. So here we have a query asking, okay, what is the number of minutes that we, um, that we spend while we wait for tasks? I mean, the number of minutes of tasks that are waiting beyond the 16 cores that we currently have on the machine. And we end up with the number 71 minutes, which means that if we can find a way to send these waiting um, tasks to other cores, it might be that the potential is to gain these 71 minutes. Then we ask the question of, um, what is about, uh, what about IO waiting? Maybe we have IO waiting. And we see that we have IO waiting for 33%, uh, percent, but when we analyze that on the process level, we see that if we uh, me uh, measure the time spent on IO wait, we come up to seven minutes, which is not something to uh, you know, not take into account, but it is not the same number, not the same uh, significance as the 71 minutes for waiting for uh, CPU. Uh, I mean, all uh, cores are, uh, number of tasks exceeds the number of uh, cores. So well, it seems that there is potential of, okay, we can use additional cores. The next question that we ask is, um, what is the amount of caching that can be used for the compiler? I mean, what is the compiler cache potential? And for that, we ran uh, a query again on the information that we logged during the compilation, during the build. And we asked, okay, for all processes that include uh, G++ here in this query. And uh, we may also add the uh, Clang, but this was the query. And we assume that all tasks are using the entire 16 cores, but we already saw that no, in some cases, not all cores are being utilized because we are waiting for IO or for uh, networking, et cetera. So this is in, in, in a way a uh, pessimistic uh, um, uh, forecast. I mean, we may do even better, but there is a potential for four, 46 minutes on um, compilation on build time that could be saved if we already have the artifact. So caching is also something important. Uh, top time takers, do compile, do configure, do package. It, it, it is interesting uh, that there are tasks that do not appear in the top three. Uh, another interesting, um, other interesting notes, which became as a challenge. At the end, when we want to uh, distribute, we want to parallelize, what it means is that we need additional machines to act as the initiator, to imitate being on the same file system. And we see that when we build the automotive grade Linux, the AGL, uh, it uses 321 different compilers during the build. Some of them seem to be the same. It might be that, you know, it is for configuration reasons, but most of them are not symlinks, are actual compilers that are being uh, deployed and used, and then you need them on the other machines as well. So again, the question is, how can we do that uh, efficiently? Um, virtualizing the entire file system on the task level without overwhelming the network. And again, the network is something which is also important here because we in parallel 
download some of the um, uh, some of the uh, dependencies. So on on the client side, on the user side, the idea is that the user would not need to maintain any homogeneous environment. The user just need to add the relevant machine with a proper architecture, but without installing anything except for uh, uh, the, the agent that would manage the homogene homogeneous environment. And all tasks need to run in isolation and to preserve the dependencies. Um, and, and by the way, the challenges that you see here are gen generic. They are, not, they are not specific to Bitbake, they are not specific to Yocto. But when you come to Yocto, and we talked about the multiverse, uh, everything, everywhere, all at once, it becomes even harder. So we need to find generic solutions for this generic issue, this generic problem in a very complicated environment. Then there is a permission uh, issue. Uh, during the build, the, there are some plays with permissions uh, and we need to support this as well. Um, we come up with a um, nice um, result that by parallelizing uh, to AWS machines in this case, we get down from 190 minutes to 90 minutes for the AGL and from 86 to 49, this is without caching. This is assuming that we have a clean build, a fresh build. For sure, if we have uh, caching, both numbers would go down. But again, I, I will talk about caching tomorrow. It is not that you can always use the entire build that you had before. And you all know that, that it, at the end, you do pay for each new build. To summarize, we have Yocto and Bitbake. And I, I'm not saying that because uh, the Yocto and Bitbake uh, um, maintainers and contributors are here, but because we work with many build systems, this is for sure one of the most complicated um, and, and it does things quite nicely. I mean, you see the complexity and at the end you see that, well, it works and it works quite out of the box. I, I mean, yeah, you, you, you need to configure, but it is something that actually works at the end. In addition, um, it doesn't invent things that are there out there already. I mean, you go to other build tools and build systems and you see that other build systems try to solve similar problems by throwing away all that we have today and inventing a new way of doing the build. And here we say, okay, Bitbig says, I would use things that we already use and build on top of that, all that we need in order to achieve the Yocto build according to your, to your configuration, architecture, layers, et cetera. Um, the Bitbag build can be parallelized to additional machines. And we can see that it can assist us by gaining faster build times. And again, I, I'm not preaching for IncrediBuild. It can be done if you have the proper distribution tool. And this was a question when we started with. And the answer is yes, it can be done. And I will discuss caching in my talk tomorrow. Uh, these are two links to some uh, um, resources on our site. Um, I would again encourage you to go and watch everything everywhere all at once. That's a great movie. You would understand why I relate it to Yocto. Uh, everything everywhere is Yocto. And we strive to be the all at once at Incredibuild. So that is it for this talk today. Thank you. I didn't have the time to go through questions and comments in the chat. I would go through them uh, during the break. And uh, there is my email here on the last slide. If you have anything that you want to discuss with us, we would be happy to discuss. Um, I, I mean, it doesn't relate to our product. I mean, we would be happy if, if uh, anybody wants to use Incredibly as a product, but if you have questions, if you have to discuss, if you want to discuss with us our experience with parallelizing um, Bitbake um, build, feel free to contact and, and talk with us. Thank you.